The rich don't pay taxes. At least if they're smart, they don't pay any taxes. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean the rich, they have teams of attorneys, teams of accountants, and their sole purpose is to go through everything and they get paid the big bucks to say, how can we lower this person's income tax, this person's um, whatever taxes they have coming in? How can we lower this burden they have of taxes? Well, some of the ways they do that are through vehicles of, they'll have foundations, they'll have uh, nonprofits, and that's how they funnel some stuff and, and keep some stuff there. And, and then they'll have LLCs, small businesses, other corporations, and through there, I mean, everything's a write-off. I say that very broadly. Not everything can be write-off, but a high majority of things are a write-off, and that's just the way it is. So the rich aren't working. They aren't getting a paycheck. They aren't getting an income like, you know, from a business. So they don't pay taxes like normal folk, if you want to call it that, or, or the, the middle class, which get a paycheck weekly, bi-weekly, monthly paycheck, and the taxes are taken from them right there. And that's just fact of matter. If there's not a way that they can avoid or, or um, lower their burden, then they pay what you know is on the paper that they have to pay. That's just the way it is. Um, so the, the rich have, they'll have uh, real estate, rental properties, that kind of stuff, and they'll, or they'll own small businesses, or they'll own some sort of shops or um, a place, a uh, food restaurant kind of deal. They'll have multiple restaurants in that. So with that being said, on the properties, if um, property taxes go up or other taxes get raised, the rich don't pay that. The rich will figure out a way, well, we, this is a huge burden now. We need to figure out how we can do this. So. What we're going to do for the rental example is we'll raise rent. Once the leases are up or individual leases are up, next time they go to renew or next time someone comes in to rent, the rental prices, you know, the amount has increased. Why? Well, because the rich isn't going to get, you know, soaked with that tax, the new taxes there. And I don't blame them. They shouldn't. So the state's here, government's here. IRS is here saying, we're going to tax these rich people, we're going to tax these people, and they're going to pay. And then they, the rich and their team say, well, you know, how can we do this? What do we need to do to do this? In, rent, in case of rentals, well, like I said, they'll raise you know, the rent. So pretty much their tax burden has not moved. How, no matter how low it is, it hasn't moved, it hasn't rose. Even though on paper, they're paying more, but they're just rolling it. I mean, the saying goes is stuff rolls downhill. Well, who's downhill? The renter's downhill in that circumstance. Same with businesses. If you're selling items or you're selling services, you, uh, you have property taxes raised. So that or other taxes raised, uh, you're not going to be paying that, or the wealthy won't be paying that, I should say. What they're going to do is they're going to raise prices of their goods and services. Any smart business owner, any smart person is going to do that. Um, that that is should be number one in your book to do other than keeping your business alive and thriving is to keep your tax burden to a minimum um, they're always investing so if they invest in uh, real estate and they have some real estate and they go to sell it there's um, things some call them loopholes but there are things where if as long as you buy another from a real estate within a certain window of time and you just go from this real estate or this place you had and you buy, you know, go from A to buy B, you sell A and buy B, really you're selling A to buy B so you're just rolling over the thing so you don't pay any taxes in between that transaction. And if the new one you bought was higher uh, price or value, then you get a break for that also. Um, so, like I said, there's companies, LLCs, the corporations, shell companies in certain cases they're doing, and like I said, everything is a business expense. Everything is a, a loose way of saying it. Almost everything is a business expense. Um, there's deferred compensation plans, 
and other stuff to do with stocks, bonds, that kind of, that kind of deal that they can do, um, just that are all legal. It's all legal. So the rich legally don't pay taxes. Or they should pay very minimal. Very, I mean, when you hear people talking about the rich need to pay a high amount, it's not going to happen, period. I mean, uh, there was a time that it happened, I guess, when the income tax was started or initiated. Only the wealthy paid a tax. Only the very top end wealthy paid any form of tax. And the government received you know, what it was at the end there, and what they got was crumbs. The IRS and government got crumbs. Well, after that, once they realized this, they updated the tax code, changed the tax code, and they increased the amount that they took, and they lowered, extremely lowered, what the minimum was for that. And that, today, is where we're at. Um, the poor and the, the lower middle class and then the middle middle class pay the majority of the income tax. And actually, who pays the most? The absolute most is the poor uh, or the lower middle class to the middle middle class. Those two, lower middle class, middle middle class, those play a huge uh, size of it. I would say, I don't have these numbers in front of me, but looking at things, I would say it's at least 80% that the lower middle class and middle middle class pay. Why is that? Well, because that's the way it's set up. I mean, and you can't afford teams of attorneys and teams of accountants to try to help you to figure out how you can lower that burden. That's just the way it goes. So every time people say we want to, you know, strike and, and tax the wealthy, tax the rich, and do that, initially, that's what they're trying, whether they're saying it or not, but it's not going to last. What's going to happen is that that tax or that law or, or whatever you want to say is in place now, and they'll just lower the bar and lower the bar and lower the bar until they get what they want and get what they think they need or they deserve and then they're coming after the middle class and the lower middle class. Those are the, the majority of the workers. Those are the majority of the taxpayers, income taxpayers, and that's what it is. So, like I said, if you're smart and wealthy, smart and rich, your tax burden should be zero or near to zero. I'd be doing the same thing if I was in that situation. But anyways, on, on a sort of side note or footnote to this, I'm just got to say the poor... The poor have the highest percentage of burden through the sales tax. They pay the highest percentage of sales tax than anybody else. Any other, you know, incremental of the high class or the high uh, middle class to the middle middle class to the rich to the wealthy, all those. And then you have your poor. Your poor pay the highest percentage of their their uh, worth or wealth or whatever you want to call it in uh, sales tax. Why is that? Well. That's because the sales tax doesn't discriminate. The sales tax is the sales tax is the sales tax. So if you, you know, you're a multi-billionaire and you go to buy some little widget, we'll call it a, a baseball bat for your child. Uh, you go to buy your baseball bat for your child and it's $100 with the sales tax on top of it. So it's $107 and the poor person here who maybe barely has two nickels, you know, to rub together. They want to get a bat for their child and because they need it because they're going to be starting baseball. They scrounge up the money or get the money from someone else they know or work for it, a side job or whatever. That baseball bat that costs $100 is still going to cost them $107 after the 7% sales tax or wherever your sales tax is in your area. So because you're dirt poor or you're extremely wealthy, that sales tax is exactly the same. So if they're buying baseball bats, baseball gloves, they're buying um, stuff for, you know, uh, a game for their child, they're buying candy, if they're buying other stuff that's not deemed a necessity, and right? even some states, candy, or I mean, excuse me, food and clothing, there's sales tax on. So the poor is nailed a lot higher percentage of sales tax than the lower middle class, middle middle class, upper middle class, rich and the extremely wealthy. They pay the same percentage in sales tax. Who's it hurt the most? Well, the rich might 
you know, spend more in dollar amount to that sales tax, but in the percentage of their wealth, it is barely crumbs versus the poor. To them, it's an extreme hardship to pay that sales tax when they don't barely have any money and enough to get, a, get by with and survive. So I just saying this, um, I'm not saying this because of any political thing out there. I just, it's been in my mind. I just got to get it out there. And all this talk about the rich need to pay their fair share or these people don't pay enough or these people need to pay more. Be careful of what you wish for because it never turns out how you think it's going to turn out. If they raise taxes, you're going to end up paying more. I don't care where you're at in the spectrum. It's just going to happen. Um, that goes along with the sayings I've said before in videos. The most expensive thing you can get is something free from the government. The most permanent thing you can have is something temporary from the government. So, as always, I'm going to dive into other things later. Sorry if this doesn't interest you, but thank you for watching. And as always, stay vigilant. Protect yourself, protect your wealth, and protect your health.